The megaliths, the stones, brought Patrick and I together, and because of them, they had a slight love story connected, and we ended up married. So um, rocks can do a whole bunch of different things in your life if you give them a chance. <laughs> uh, Patrick had sent to me a very short clip of, of the stone chambers, and he said, do you know anything about these? And because he's such an expert in the field, I was surprised, intrigued, and thrilled that I had one up on him. And I said, do I know anything about them? I live in the middle of them. So uh, when he decided to come east, uh, the, the flicker of interest in the, in the stone chambers uh, led and opened us to curiosity. And both of us are people who can't, can't avoid curiosity. It seems to find us. And the curiosity led to fascination. And that led to intrigue. and, and and then we became enchanted with them. We fell in love with them. And um, I happen to love gemstones, but rocks were not exactly one of the things that drew my attention or fascination. But now they do, because they have a magic to them. And the magic seems to have wound its way around us. Uh, we hadn't intended on doing anything with them until we started to research them in the area. To, to find the chambers, to get into them, to feel their energy, to be um, moved by them, touched by them. And, and we became not only curious and enchanted and fascinated with them, we became passionate about them. Because we realized that, that to this point in time, they're just sort of standing there. And nobody has any idea as to what's going on with them. And, and their antiquity amazed us. and, and if any of you have had the opportunity or do have the opportunity to actually stand in any of them, you'll know what I'm talking about when I say magic. There is an energy there that takes you out of time and puts you in a place of peace, tranquility, and protection that is profoundly amazing. Now, all of this sort of, we, we played with our photographs, we played with researching, we played with talking to people, and Patrick had the idea to put a video together to see just what we could do with this type of energy. And so we did put the video up on YouTube, and I think to, the, to date, there have been over 15,000, almost 20,000 hits on it. And it led us to talk to a, a producer, a, uh, promoter, actually, uh, Gibby Media in, in Salt Lake City. And Patrick had been commissioned to do 13 uh, documentaries with him. And instead of doing one of the documentaries that had been planned, Secrets of the Stone had been put in its place. So what you're going to see today is a rough cop, a very rough copy. Please be gentle. We, <laughs> there, are, there are hiccups. And, and there are skips, and there are probably other things that we have to, to fix in them. But this is the, the sort of the baby, the seed to what will become yeah. uh, a documentary in a 13-part 13, 13 series. It's called, it's called Destiny of Man. And if you want to check out the website, it's destinyofman.tv. And it's for um, the, the cable channels, History, Discovery, and, and probably National Geographic. So um, that, we, that we rolled into this was magical. That I can't say we worked hard on it because we have celebrated every moment. Um, I can't tell you the number of ticks I have pulled off both him and the dog. Um, I've, I see everybody go crashing into the woods, following stone walls that go nowhere, but, but thoroughly enjoying it. Um, our dog has become a caveite. And, and a chamberite, she can't stay out of them either. So um, if a car stops along, if we stop along the side of the road, you can be sure there's a wall or a chamber someplace. And I don't think in the last year and a half we have arrived on time anywhere. Because there's always, there's a wall, there's a structure. Oh my god. And, and it, you'll get involved in it too. You'll find that things that you didn't notice before, you are suddenly noticing. And these are, to me, silent sentinels of times long past. And there's magic here. And I don't know what the magic is, but I do know that it has certainly um, aroused a new, a new interest and a new energy within my life. And it enhances everything that I see and touch. And it's something that I am passionate about. Patrick is as well. It has changed our lives. And hopefully, 
it will change yours and everyone who sees this as well. So without further ado, I'm going to turn this off, turn this on, and let you see our baby. And again, it's just a rough copy, but it, it, is, it does tell the story. OK, this off. You can tell I'm not a computer person. OK, Jason, what am I not hitting? Got it? OK. Weaving across the face of New England and creating a literal web of mystery are hundreds of thousands of miles of stone walls including numerous other unexplained stone structures and thousands of stone chambers. The chambers appear randomly, sometimes capping the ends of great stone walls or appearing to be built into the sides of hills. These megaliths stand silently, a testimony and a reminder of the antiquity of the area, but with no reminders as to their purpose or that of those who created them. The walls honeycomb the land, seeming to guide the paths of the roads they border, or at other times appearing to be randomly directed. They often define what seem to be specific areas, or appear to wander aimlessly through the remote forests. The most recent residents of these areas accept them as always having been there, and credit ancestors, indigenous peoples, early explorers, ancient cultures, or even glaciers as the creators. They are accepted as a part of the landscape, and as such, their mystery becomes folklore, and the facts of their creation are hidden in plain sight. They are silent, ancient tracings of times long past, a testimony of a fragment of our history not yet recorded or acknowledged. Yet similar structures appear all over the world and have been chronicled and recorded for centuries in books and in literature. One needs only to stand in the presence of one of the stone chambers to pause for a moment within one of them, to feel the antiquity and know that unusual means and methods were used in their creation. What has most recently come to light is the incredible number of these stone structures that are scattered across the landscape and are slowly being sacrificed to the expansion of a new generation which is not mindful or focused upon preserving their own history. Countless numbers of the chambers, miles of stone walls, and other structures have been carelessly dismantled or altered with no regard to the antiquity they represent. The stone walls represent yet another aspect of the mysteries of the stones. In 1939, using data from an 1872 Department of Agriculture report on fences, it was estimated that there was a combined length of approximately a quarter of a million miles of stone walls in the New England area. A length equivalent to a single wall stretching around the earth over 10 times. The mass of stone used in the walls is greater than that from all the ancient stone monuments in the world combined. Utilizing modern technology, these numbers would clearly be increased exponentially. Because of the vast numbers and extreme lengths of the stone walls, most New Englanders are aware of their presence. They are obviously difficult to miss. Few, however, have any idea as to their purpose, or for that matter, who actually created them. They have been described as boundary markers, stock fences, and property demarcations. What escapes reason and understanding is that they are often random, close together, and without direction. Starting and stopping for no apparent reason, going up hills and across ridges, in areas that could not have been planted or used for grazing or agriculture. Often closely connected to these walls are other unusual structures, most notably thousands of stone chambers scattered across the landscape. 